I'm Sarah Christensen with One Sage Review Astrology. Welcome back. We're doing the Nicola Coquin and Luke Newton Bridgerton Season 3 Astrology. And I'm looking at the promo tour and Australia. And this is a second part of that. And we're continuing to look at the astrology and better understanding the energies of that moment. Of course, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to comment. Um, if something emerges, you know, you want to understand something better, please, you know, drop a comment and I will try to answer everybody's questions. Also, there has been so much activity with the fandom. It's been an interesting couple of weeks, I guess. I was, this is the first time I've been recording probably in two weeks. So there's been a lot going on. <laughs> I don't get too, too close to it. Uh, I kind of stay on the periphery in terms of, you know, dialing in. I'm just, I, I operate from the observer role uh, with a lot of the, the extra stuff, I guess, <laughs> that's showing up in uh, what this means or what that means on, on kind of the day-to-day -day stuff. I more take the position of long game. This is a long game when it comes to Nicola and Luke. So I don't get too uh, excited about the stuff that's happening day to day. I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. But it's it's, it's an interesting, I guess, watching the collective uh, fandom get so excited about certain things. But then I think of the astrology of the moment. And it's like, oh, okay. So Pluto is a, it's a transformation planet. and But we don't control Pluto. Pluto is like the transformation that we're going through as an individual. And those who are born with Pluto in Scorpio have a deep psychology obsessiveness <laughs> within their own psyche. And those born with Pluto in Libra has, have the obsessive like look into relationships. And those born with Pluto in Virgo are more, how should I, the Pluto in Virgo is a little bit more humility, humbleness, done the work, just do the work. I don't think. Pluto and Virgo is, um, they're change agents, but they just do the work. They just kind of go do what needs to be done kind of attitude. Um, they have, but that's part of it. And Pluto and Leo is a whole nother different energy in terms of learning about ego. So everyone in the Pluto and Leo generation is learning about the ego in a big way. So <laughs> we could go you know, hours and hours talking about the Pluto in different signs, but that's for another day. Uh, we're going to focus on Australia. I take one thing, I, I bite off one little piece at a time. We're talking about Nick and Luke and what is going on with them in this period of time. I think Australia was super key because of looking at their own astrology and it's kind of the beginning of the big travel, huge travel, you know, jet lag, you know, jumping time zones to get to Australia to do the promo and then back bouncing from there and across several cities. And so by the time they're in Toronto, they're they're getting sick. They're, they're sick at that point, right? So that we observed in the interview. So I think it's important to kind of keep it like this is the, what they were experiencing. But in the background, there is other stuff going on in the background. We have our observation of like, wow, this, that energy is turned on in a big way. And I think the energy was turned on in a big way during the promo tour because yeah, they were doing the promo and they're trying to sell their series, you know, their season. But it's also, they had already connected I think to a certain degree and they've been friends for a long time but I think there was a spark that went beyond the friends in early 2023 and based on some of the information that we got from TIFF's lives about the timeline yeah based on what I see in the sharing of the information about the songs that they were sharing between them and some other information it's like yeah there's a lot more going on there but I think there was also a pullback and I don't know who would have been the pullback, but I suspect it was Nicola. Nicola is the pullback. And I think um, there's a reason for that professionally, but also spiritually. I think her soul is going through transformation as it relates to the South Node in Libra. And of course, guess what? Luke Newton's Jupiter is right on that in Libra. Yeah. So something about their relationship is very important for her to break through something from the past. Okay. And vice versa. He has something that he gets from her to also break through. So he has a lot that has to, I think from everything that's been unfolding makes so much sense to the astrology. Okay. And to me, that's what's going on from them in their inner plane and learning about themselves and understanding themselves in the height of this moment on top of that. So it's exciting to like, kind of, I, I enjoy looking at it. It's very interesting, but I hope you enjoy it. And um, again, if you have anything, please share. It's exciting to do this. So let's go. All right. So we are looking at Luke's chart now. 
and we can see a shift of everything because you know, him being a Leo rising based on what we know. And the moon in Australia is finishing off his second house and will be going into his third house of communication. So that first day, 29, and then emerging into Libra. And then also 19, the Venus in the Aries on in his ninth house of something activated when he's um, traveling in a foreign place communication is visible and yet there are some things that are hidden because that's uh that's mercury in the retrograde which is in the underworld so there's something being activated on the internal plane for luke so to me this is also the astrology that they're looking at so when they're in australia they're looking at their astrology and this is kind of waking something up in him probably more on the subconscious level than it is conscious because he did, probably doesn't understand a wink of it yet but maybe it's activating it in a powerful way so he will uh, look at it in time i I would imagine it's tricky to be in such a highly visible, like your identity is so visible in the public eye. That has got to be a really challenging scenario because you know how much you want to guard yourself and yet you have to have a public image and all of these things and then how you conduct yourself and all of that. But you probably, he, definitely Luke feels very sensitive to that. His moon, likely Cancer, likely 12th house, okay? And his Mars is also in Cancer, so there's a desire to protect itself or also the feminine so here's another thing on the feminine thing it's almost like luke is sitting in the paradox of having the energy that if you really knew luke you would know his moon and you would know his mars like his desire to protect and the sensitive self and women and this kind of thing though he's going to make choices that is going to look counter to that in some ways from an outsider looking in because it's going to set up for him to understand jealousy that he is probably working on as a soul. Now, of course, this is assumptions based on what I've covered so far. This is for entertainment purposes, right? I'm not sitting with Luke one-on-one -on -one and having an exact birth time to know his exact rising sign, right? If I had that more exact, I could do so much more with his astrology, but we don't, we're going on full sign houses and making a few assumptions on some things. But in general, a lot of the themes are still pertinent because of the larger planets being where they are and is sun where it is and his nodes where they are that's key here his moon could slightly move in his natal chart by the timing right i mean if he was born later in the day on february 5th i think is his birthday then it is possible that we have a different chart and i'll explore that in another chart analysis video but based on nicola's information from that other video we're going with theo rising which i think is significant and kind of speaks to some other things that he shows up in his private life like we've seen videos of him cooking and to me that's like that sensitivity of in the moon and cancer right um and food he's <laughs> a big foodie uh so that's yeah part of that okay so for luke when he is in australia the sun the mid heaven of the moment when he first gets there and that conjunction of jupiter and uranus are happening in his 10th house of career so the international tour almost like has in the seed as they start in australia something unexpected is going to happen as it pertains to jupiter okay because Jupiter is next, you know, conjunction, it's fusing with, it's a new synodic cycle happening. So there's something unexpected going, is on deck coming in the wave of energy from this, which will land in, you know, a couple months when he, they get to London and the night of June 12th. So for him, it's related to his career. And the Jupiter for him is about communication and perception with relationship. And also part of that is sibling. And she's in the equation. Lauren is in the situation in some ways. Now, of course, I can't dive in explicitly. I can only, you know, part of the theme, even, you know, that's going to emerge in the synodic cycle of Jupiter in Uranus in his house of career, right? There's something that something's happening around perception, around communication, around relationships and how that's been exploded and made exaggerated and all of that. And he has to deal with it, but he's dealing with it from perception. How am I going to communicate? How am I going to communicate in relationships? Oh my God, this thing blew up. And why, why did it go this way? It's going over here. You know, out having astrology or depth psychology, would he understand that, right? Like he would have more of a, a general sense like, oh, you know, but 
things can be not conscious, right? And to get more conscious, be more made more aware of yourself, you have to have these storylines that play out and they go, oh, that's in the theme of that thing. And I'm trying to act in a new way. I'm trying to figure something out. And how do I change the behaviors because something happened, right? Like you have to have the storyline to evolve the thing, right? That's so important. So the Jupiter is being activated by the, the South Node, the beginning of that tour in, in, um, in Australia. We have Pluto in his seventh house of other. So he is a participating party of the partners that he is dealing with. And I'm talking, that's a plural, plural. His self, his identity, and his relationship with the other, the significant committed other. And committed is multiple multiple levels of perspective. One is his co-star, who by means of contract, uh, legal contract, he is, you know, in a relationship of contractual agreement with. They are also best friends. And then you could bring in the other person. Antonia is a behind the scenes significant person who's showing up in places, right? Was it ever defined as a girlfriend or whatnot? Yay, nay, whatever. The important part is that from his perspective, there's going to be a complete transformation of what he thinks about others because Pluto is going to be emerging through all of that and it will change change him over time through all these planets that are in his natal it'll activate and change all his point of perspective about what he thinks about that and his increased detachment needing to be more decreased detached from emotional so it's kind of like he may already have a detached but because all of the Aquarius is in his seventh house he may operate from the perspective that set that thinks that other people are detached and they don't understand him. He may be operating out of his moon more and has the desire and drive for being in the public eye, but he has a nervousness around it. I mean, he like came from the stage that from from the theater, right? It's like there's a completely different relationship with the public and how something is. I mean, in theater, you don't get to have your camera in the theater per se, right? Like the the, the image for the theater, theater Broadway is a completely, I mean, there are people on Broadway that are amazing talent. I mean, top tier talent on Broadway, you know, in theater. And his energy is capable of all the movie and this kind of, I mean, he, but he has a learning to do around is how he matures into it. And I think we'll see that part of Luke Newton, especially around age 33. When they go to do the promo for season four, we'll see a new Luke, I think, in some aspects. Because when I observe some of the videos that came out of like when he was... I think with one of the one or a couple people who were helping him choose what to wear after Bridgerton when they were kind of looking up new style and they were messing with his curly hair and he's bringing back the curls. <laughs> bring him back the curls because Nicola wants curls again. Now, I think it was interesting when he, some of his body language to me was still like a young Luke. Even though he's been through his Saturn return, I still think Luke is like, you know, the way he was raised, I think has, there was probably a very innocent, he's very, he's sweet and kind because then he did, had not faced a lot of harshness in life until he had all this stuff go on with Bridgerton. It's probably shocking to him why he has had such bad uh, stuff go down on social media. Well, it's this, all that, that Saturn, that Mercury squared to his Pluto in Scorpio. That's why he gets it. He gets the obsessive, you know, connections there. So, and certain people will come into his life and be a catalyst like Antonia is a catalyst I think and so she's a part of the blueprint I think for the karmic uh wave to break and for him to figure something out so I, I wouldn't take that away from anyone um that's a part of the souls trying to figure something out so people play their parts you know sometimes we have dragons in our lives and we have to do our part to slay the dragon but it's a part of your own inner world that it's just acting out with another soul who has their own dragon okay I hope that makes sense um it's such a big part of understanding evolutionary intentions of the soul because it's like you have experiences that are absolutely karmic and going to play out for you to get to the thing that you are trying to figure out, try to evolve, try to move from there. Uh, so that's very important. And Luke's south node is the, you know, in Gemini and it is 
tied to the collective group consciousness, but it's also tied to friends, friends and allies that have, you know, questionable, you know, activities behind the scenes. <laughs> so, and that all had to play out, right? So it's like, okay, I don't judge anyone. I just like observe. And it's like, okay, that's interesting. But then I, we can't see everything of what he does with it. We've only seen some things in terms of becoming more detached in social media, blocking things, unchecking things of follows and all that kind of, that to me is a very surface level activity that he's doing because inside he's like, I need to like self protect, but he's trying to like still have an, a public image. He's still trying to figure out how do I do that? And I, he could just at some point just give that over to somebody else to manage for him, but maybe not. He's part of the, individuals born in the early 90s who have the Neptune and the Uranus in Capricorn. And so, you know, that technology and how they work with that and the imagination, there's so much going on there, right? And the series for him in the sixth house of work is a transformation. There is a grief and loss on some part of his work, right? And also how he will understand or perceive Saturn figures of sorts because of Capricorn is um, ruled by Saturn. That's a very powerful Saturn in its own sign. And there's the vertex. The vertex is like another angle and, you know, at noon -ish, um, in Australia, when they're there on the 21st of April, that is being, you know, landed, you know, it's very active on right on his Saturn. So that's interesting. So there's um, the faded kind of fadedness to that as well. So, and then we take a look at again, here we go again with the Chiron, the wounded healer with Venus and they are sextile, it's sextile to the Saturn and the fate. So it's getting excited. They, and I kind of say it's like the energy can see the, you know, the Saturn of his chart is getting activated by the Venus in transit and the Chiron in transit. So if he's in communication with Nicola while well, they are, you know, just hanging out and um, they're learning about astrology, just the beginnings of it. So they might be poking around about that. They might be discussing um, what else is coming down the line for them in terms of when they're hanging out about the other stops that are coming for them. And they might be sharing, you know, these kinds of things when they're off from being in the public eye, like in the hotel and these kinds of things or, or whatnot. But that also, that energy squares this energy. This is the energy right here in the chart that as it pertains to his work, his uh, structure that he builds for it, the detached. So to me, when things get out of hand because of the obsessiveness and so forth, what might he... so because because it's out of his hands. It's like, it's, it's exploding. It's kind of like this difficult. And there's a little bit of grief involved there with Ceres there in, in Capricorn 19 degrees. So to me in time, it would not surprise me that Luke Newton might like completely hand over um, some of his socials social media stuff to somebody else to manage for him. And then he just text the people he cares about. That could be a very possibility. He might, depending on, I mean, he's pulled up, pulled back significantly this summer, but when they return, how much frenzy come, kicks back up in season four when they there's any kind of connection, right? Like, I, I still think that they will be like uh, being detached a bit to kind of come back and do the work. So, and keep their connection a little bit behind the scenes still and so we, we may not see we may not see the behind the scenes from season four until 26 like in the summer of 2026 and i think that's an important because by then Luke will grow into the shoes of what it means to be in the fame that he is. So that's interesting. Um, what else do I want to share here? So yeah, because of the total solar, like, solar eclipse being so important in Luke Newton's progress chart that I talked about in the other astrology video I did for him about his progress chart and his progressed Venus, when they're in Australia, that is, you know, active in his ninth house of being in international travel being in a foreign place where things are things are being activated so it's not surprising to me that things get activated for him related to his career how he thinks about the feminine what he's his attraction and what he might project onto the feminine because a, a man in the venus is that's a projection he puts on the partner so while he's with nicola while he's traveling i'm sure there is stress from the other person in the life and but there is probably an ease when he's with nicola so he's probably not communicating as well with another person because his jupiter is in libra <laughs> And I have a feeling he's going into a past pattern of how he might communicate 
between you know the people in his life that are significant <laughs> and he's he's learning something right so okay i'm not going to judge him it's just what he where he is in his his pattern of maturity and then he will learn how important that is in, to, in relationship to his career image because it's his public persona that's going to go through the battlefield of the venus having being a part of the eclipse degree and what happens when he's in the promotor going around the globe okay that is so part of the story of his for him to have that karmic wave breaking on June 12th, okay? It all has to play in a way. Now, I think there was even, like he got so much heat, I think on social media that I learned about in other, like the season two, like how they ended season two for Colin saying, you know, he would never date or court Penelope Featherington, you know, in your wildest dreams, Fife, you know? But I think he got so much grief for that because he played a part in it, which is stunning to me that people would get all, I don't know, frustrated, angry, obsessively I don't know I don't I, I have a hard time understanding that but some I think it's because of so much illusion and people buying into the illusion so much that it's like it's that's just it's the character that's not who he is right even though he might be similar to his character how much does he absorb in his consciousness of his character portrayal you know that's a question <laughs> <laughs> but, and there was also like the fascination that like, oh, people were thinking, oh, well, he has a fascination. Like, is he in love with the the character Penelope is as Luke Newton fascinated so much with, you know, like an obsessive fascination uh, attraction with Penelope, not just Nicola. Right. So there's something to that um, of how he talks about it. But I also think it's just Luke Newton's personality. He's probably a very nice person, very kind hearted person and very, very sweet sweet. So with that comes a bit of someone who's a pleaser and who also doesn't like conflict and also doesn't, you know, understand when people could be so mean or critical when it's something that's just like acting apart. I, I mean, I, I would be, I, I would understand that. Like, why do they think that? Where do they, you know, that would be probably hard to like overcome, but it's a part of his chart to understand the psychology of other and how that is in his not only his root because the, the Scorpio here the obsessive detective the obsessive you know of the psyche it sits in his fourth house and his fourth house is family so it's in the family root and he's part of that he's a boy, um, the son in this family. Um, his father was also a singer who won a contest. I think they, and how he was inspired by his father, but his mother is significant in the arts in what she does in, I think it's in Brighton. I think that's where he's from. So his soul having his, the birth chart, the way that it is, is important because to have a breakthrough to go get towards more of the creative freedom and principle like what do you want to create Luke Newton and what do you want to say you have a big screen Luke Newton and what do you want to say about relationships what are all these aspects of relationship that he's had to navigate and then what does he do with it in parts like I don't think Luke Newton fully understands that but I think he's coming to understand a lot based on these recent experiences and his north node being in Sagittarius is about his philosophy his vision as it pertains to creative principle now that is also the fifth house of children right you, you could have children and it's very powerful for him and I love seeing how he interacts with the babies <laughs> on screen from Phoebe's yeah do I have that right no not Phoebe Daphne that uh, Daphne's her character his sister Daphne Colin's sister Daphne in the show when she brings her baby um and also the babies of Marina when he goes and, and visits her and sees the babies like how he interacts with babies as Colin but of course I think we've seen in other I think images like private images on social media of him interacting with the baby as well so i really think that luke newton would be he's the type that would be a great dad because he has a kind personality has a big heart he would be in a phenomenal because of his sensitivity right so i think he also has probably a, a deep well of the but empathy when you're sensitive you can yeah you have that ability to empathize so 
he's he's a fascinating person who has huge challenges to navigate on such a public image. Um, he's learning about relationships. I can't imagine being in you know my 20s and in my early 30s having someone like being in a role like being so so visible, so famous, and then you know every move uh, dissected the way it's been dissected. I mean, my goodness, right? That would be so hard. I mean, even just from my small sphere of creating a video that's going to be public, it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there just in that small, small frame, right? I mean, and then imagine millions. And oh my goodness, that would be nerve wracking, nerve wracking. And especially if you are still trying to build your confidence because in your youth, you felt like a little bit of challenge because of, you know, ADHD uh, or, you know, anxiety. I mean, it would just make it even that more emphasized in the life. So Luke Newton and his Jupiter are exploring the expansiveness of the creative. So his creative is so around relationships. And then he's going to be what from the inner plane does he get from all of that? And it's, so it's educating his soul in such a unique way. I love it. And what he will do with it what parts he will get. I'm so interested to see what other parts he will play, even though I think the Colin character is in each season um, because he's such a paramount character, at least through the books I've been reading. So in, I know he'll be in the seasons for season four or season five. And if they get a six and a seven, you know, whatever, he'll probably be invited back for that. So yeah. So Australia, very, very interesting and all of the combinations that we see from the astrology of the moment for Nicola and then for Luke. I mean, again, we don't, because we don't have the exact time of birth, the angles of the ascendant and the midheaven are going to be slightly off. And so I think, you know, there is a potential that Luke Newton's midheaven can be anywhere like this way, right? That's, I think, the deeper that goes. So, you know, because as the time of the day goes on, it goes deeper. So I think that's important to understand that um, in terms of the angle, and the angles are so powerful, but the node is definitely is close to that midheaven. So he's leaning into understanding more about his own instincts and instinctual nature while being on the road and being in the promo tour. And of course, that Cupido, which is at one degrees, is activating his Venus. Now, Cupido to me is more lusting, lust. Yeah, it's more in the lust, even though it's Cupido. So it's going to get, it's going to grab you. <laughs> And it's very visible, right? So I, I think that's interesting, even though it's the, the asteroid is Cupido, but what I've read about it is very highly, highly attractive, but a little bit more on the lust side, which is interesting because in some of the, the promo videos in Australia, um, he's caught like <laughs> glancing down her black dress and, you know, all that wonderful cleavage that Nicola has and um, boy can't help himself. <laughs> <laughs> and also just the innuendo that kicks off. I mean, so the innuendo started, you know, in Australia and some of those as well. And then his glances when they're building the flower wreaths and how he's looking at Nicola and their laughter when they're playing the croquet or whatever you call that pommel. So all of that instinctual uh, sexiness, but the lusty part, yeah, is definitely present on uh, and we can read it. Right. I mean, that's what it's like. People are like, hmm, what's going on in Australia? But then it just continues, picks up, picks up energy because then they're in Italy and then they go to back to New York and then down to Rio. So it's an interesting observation of what we picked up from this part of the tour. So, yeah, uh, I think I've covered a lot of what I want to cover. If if it's important to like consider the ascendant, I mean, the ascendant in can in, is in the sign of cancer, activating his Mars. Mars is passion uh, but it's also it might be sensitive to how he's picking up on the energies of the feelings and being a, I mean, I'm sure it's like significant because this is kind of maybe the first crowds outside of what that was happening in, in around Valentine's Day I believe that the, but this was being on the international de destination in Australia and would be sensitive to the energies, of course, it's being activated by that ascendant. But that's a new, I mean, the actual event when they come and walk out when she's in the black dress and he's in the long coat. And that might be later in the day, but in the afternoon, maybe even around 2, 33 o'clock, maybe even slightly later. But that's before they were going to review episode one down there. Yeah. Um, what else is important to point out? Yeah. So Mars and Neptune are definitely activating more feeling in him. And so his, the sensitivity that we're going to observe around how he feels about something is going to be on his face. So that definitely, definitely played out. 
So that's this energy connecting with this moon here. Because that's in a trine. Like, there's no gates. It's just, it's there. It's out on his face. It's in his body language. It's in his frustration if he fumbles on a word or something. That's not what I meant. <laughs> you know, uh, that kind of thing. So that's also there. And that is going to be what people obsess about too. <laughs> can't help it but it's there for all the things that we love about him as an actor that were like all the details of his micro expressions that were on his face in his body language that's the fascination that people continue to edit and make edits and edits and edits and edits and edits and um, I'm sure he's fascinated by observing those at some point he probably it's like okay I've seen them all <laughs> right but that's something for him to understand about like wow they're picking up on every little tiny subtle thing every hand movement every eyebrow every smirk you know smile turn of my head everything and so that's the obsession of the Scorpio picking up in that all in the sensitivity of the feeling nature on the face in the body language and so it's emphasized with the Mars as well around passion what you know, and the illusion that's being created. Imaginations go wild. Everybody's imaginations go wild. This family goes wild. Okay. What else I think I have covered? So here's, oh, I haven't covered Eros. Eros is at nine degrees Gemini when they're in Australia. For Luke, it is activating towards his south node and it is activating at a trine to his palace of Pina creative intelligence. I think people are, I don't think it registered immediately all of these micro expressions that, that kind of emerged through the tour and then it got continual emphasis on it. And, but to me, it's emphasizing the obsession of, of that, how Luke Newton in his Colin portrayal, those micro communications of sort from his face, his body language and these kinds of things. I mean, the line, the script was, you know, how much were they able to, you know, move from the script is him him telling the story through those subtle subtle expressions, right? So much was said in those subtle expressions. And that to me is why the carriage scene is so amazing in that peaking point, right? So of season three. So to me, that is interesting because Palace Athena and the Eros to me are kind of like the creative intelligence and how it's edited a gazillion ways. And then I also think that in time, because it was edited so much and picked up on so much, Luke is realizing how important that is in such this impact. And so the Eros is, you know, so Eros is not like a planet that has a role from personal planets and all of that. It's more Eros is an asteroid that's articulating something about what's being communicated, the duality of something, because it's in Gemini. So it's like what you communicated through your art is one thing, and then it's being picked up and, and translated in a million other ways as well. And um, also brings in the illusion that's created as well and how people play with that illusion there's so much i mean so, be, so many people are so curious about this meaning this or that because of that subtle hand movement smile laugh eyebrows everything right so it's it's totally dissected in a million ways and he's learning about that right and how it is in the collective consciousness to me 11th house is in the collective group consciousness and the curiosity around that i think he's like wow and so he has a powerful medium that he can continue to use in his acting and he will probably leverage what people have been paying attention to because someone with all that Aquarius will learn that and use it in their creative. I mean, that's, you know, where he would go with it, right? So there's one thing to be something, learning something about your a past life relationship thing and dynamic that you're ironing out, but there's also what he does with it creatively, right? It's like, wow, I have learned that all these little subtle things that I do with my face and whatnot, they're going to pick up all these different things. And great, I can put that in a character, right? It's great. I love it. It's how, how you tell a story and um, how you suspend reality for us to believe the story that you're telling us. It's great. It's fascinating. And then he can't hide maybe things in his personal life because it, because of the way he's just the way he thinks, the way he operates as an individual. I mean, uh, some people say it's like something with ADHD. That's possible. I don't know. I haven't studied that enough to know uh, for certain. For certain, um, how you know how I know is it a stim a stim stim when you 
touches his lip related, but I don't think he was always doing that as a thing to comfort himself per se. It might be just a habit that's, you know, you're not thinking about it. It's very unconscious habit, right? That could be, but it could be part of ADHD. I don't know for sure, for certain, but that's a powerful thing to explore. Yeah. One more thing. I have a red arrow on this, of course. We've talked about the Jupiter and the Uranus coming together. And that's so close to the opposition of his Pluto and Psyche in his chart. So to me, that moment in Australia is opening and he's participating about how there's a breakthrough in the feminine and he plays a role in that. Okay, that's part activated. And then because that also squares his Saturn, that's his work and his relationship with another person. But he will have things he has to learn about it because there's a bit of a wound about being so public, having such an image. And what happens with his, what is, what am I going to give? What's my face? What's my mask to give the world? Uh, I'm getting so dicey here. I don't even know how to be out there with all these cameras on me, right? Here's another fascinating thing because he is a fan of like the 1975. And if he's a fan of Harry Styles, he probably is, I would more than likely, maybe, maybe not. I don't know how young men look at fan being a fandom, but the, the Harry Styles One Direction fandom is extraordinary, just like Taylor Swift and her fans. But the, it, Harry's is different, and he's a fan of Harry Styles. He played Harry Styles music a lot when they were in, in when they shared the trailer. And I think he should, if he hasn't already, he would be studying how Harry Styles uses social media for image and how he operates and controls certain activities and things like that. I mean, he, yeah, I think there's something that he might be observing and trying to learn and understand for himself about how to use the social media. Nicola for sure in her own right, but I think Nicola was open just like the Harry Styles Louis Tomlinson, um, these individuals of One Direction, Niall Horn, Liam Payne, you know, that generation is very tied into One Direction <laughs> and their music. So, and Zane, they, uh, how they presented in time, how they used to be so uh, open and really extraordinarily open as rising stars back in 2011, 12, 13, 14, so on. And they eventually, you know, were no longer on Twitter now X, whatever it is, but they were very open in the beginning. It's just like how Nicola and Luke were very open in the beginning. And then they, they're learning, oh, I got to clamp that down. It's, it's way, it gets too wild out there in the fans and, and their perceptions and their illusions that are being created, right? So that's just an interesting phenomenon that goes on in that, the collective about that. And I think Luke is probably going to pay attention to that more and more about how he might operate with that. Maybe in time, he's, he's, he's learning, I think slowly but surely sometimes it takes a little bit of time for things to integrate but i think that's that's a part of his experience i think a new paradigm with that new cycle in his career that's that to me is like okay this is the moment that where things just go completely haywire and then he's going to have to navigate like how do i want to present to the world what my image is going forward not that he can control it but holistically but he can control you know, what he likes and what he doesn't like, but he may completely hand that over to someone else to manage. Anyway, I think I have covered all the things I want to cover pertaining to Luke and Nicole when they were in Australia. If you have any questions or comments, please share. I love your comments as always. Um, the next videos are going to be about Italy. We're going to focus on Milan and Verona and also, yeah, dive into that because there was a little bit of a different energy I'm, I'm hearing. I haven't looked at it extensively for Italy in some of the interviews. So I have to kind of go review those and we'll explore that in the next couple of videos and go from there. So if you're interested in your own astrology reading, you can contact me at onesagesview.com on my website. Your own astrology is the whole point here is to look at your own astrology beyond just Nicola and Luke. Hopefully you are learning a little something. And if you have a question, please share. I'm happy to answer. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.